Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see Service Restrictions for Lethal Service, ASME Section 8, Division 1, Subsection B, UW2. We have all these courses available on our Thinkific platform. To learn more about these courses, register with the link given in the description. Now let us start with the UW2 structure. Okay, how it is structured. See, we are reading a chapter which is mostly we ignore as a static equipment design. Okay, so it's very important to be a little patient with that. Okay, and there will be some figures and photos coming which to make you uh, you know more interested and glued to the PPT, but. Welding related clauses as a static, we most of the time ignore. So please be really you know, attentive to hear what we are going to share. Okay. So UW2, what is covered? It's the clause UW2A talks about lethal service. We'll talk about that. UW2C talks about unfired steam boilers, okay, where the design pressure is exceeding 50 psi. Then UW2D, which talks about pressure vessels having direct firing, okay, which is very similar to section one. Okay. So lethal service. What are the additional requirements related to lethal service? Okay. First of all, what is lethal service? Anybody? What is lethal service? How we define? What do we mean by lethal service? Anyone like to share anything? See, we are here to discuss. So nothing right or wrong just mention whatever injurious to human life exactly okay dangerous to human life harmful exactly exactly to the point okay so lethal substances are poisonous gases or liquids okay even a small small amount of that gas may be very hazardous to human life okay are these gases and what is that amount that is very specific and Mostly either client or process department will tell us. So the service, if it is lethal, is applicable. We don't have to decide whether it is applicable or not. It will be available to us as an input. Okay. So if it is applicable, okay, if in service it is mentioned as lethal service, then as a designer, what we have to be careful is that all the butt welded joint shall be fully radiographed. Whatever joints we are having in this pressure vessel shall be fully radiographed. That will be the requirement which will be given by us. Okay, that has to be mentioned in the drawing because the drawing is going to be the final output. Okay, so if we are not mentioning in the drawing, the chances are that it will get missed. If we just mention in the data sheet, nobody refers that. Yes, fully radiography, Himanshu means 100%. You are absolutely right. Okay. So 100% radiography is required. Now the second restrictions what code puts ERW pipe, no. electric resistance welded pipes or tube are not permitted if we have lethal service. Okay, these are the things which we have to remember, right? Because what happens if we don't remember, we are not going to come and cross check the code for this. Okay, so if by mistake somebody has given you know, we might be at reviewer position so if by mistake our junior have mentioned erw pipe grade so unless we remember this we will not be able to catch that mistake okay so that is the reason we have to remember that these pipes are not permitted okay third and very important carbon or low alloy steel if that is the material pwht becomes mandatory for every thickness okay for every thickness pwht becomes mandatory there are some exemptions if there is specific requirement you have to go and check what are these exemptions and if you are if you can take that exemption okay great now let us dive little further deeper still we are there in the lethal service requirement okay 
and we are going to dive little deeper so we are studying about uw2 clause and here we are a1 a clause we are going to refer so what it tells that category e type joint all the category e type joint shall be of type number 1 okay so in the chapter 1 we have mentioned what is type number 1 we have discussed in detail we'll talk about that little bit here to remind you again so all the category a type joint shall be type number 1 okay in very brief what is type number 1 anybody can tell in just two words if i say what is type number 1 what is type number 1 weld full penetration exactly samit exactly to the point these are full penetration weld okay now how it can be achieved whether i need both side welding i need backing strip and then removing it or i want to do tig welding at the root okay those are cleft on the fabricator but we have to ensure full penetration then only it can be qualified as type number 1 that is the one thing to remember okay just we have created a figure to remind you what are the category a wells these are actually the long seams the highest highest stressed seams okay if you remember like that that you will not forget okay so the seams which are highest stress which are generated in these seams you know so these are category a now just to remind you type number 1 first i can have both side welded joint so that i am able to achieve full penetration i can weld it with temporary backing ring but i'll have to remove it okay backing ring should not be there in place okay third is root with tig welding that is a little expertise you know we have to be little expert if you want to do this welding okay here with only one side axis we are able to ensure full penetration okay this is not possible unless we are expert okay so only expert fabricators can do that so whenever there is welding mentioned and people have designed it for full penetration full radiography joint efficiency as one we have to be very careful that either one of these welds should appear for that okay otherwise there is mismatch in design and fabrication we have designed for something else and something else is fabricated okay now the second clause of u2 a 1 b talks about category b and c what is the requirement for that the category b and c weld shall be either type number 1 or type number 2 little relaxation how type 2 is different type 2 is one sided welded with backing strip and this backing strip remains in place okay uh, the arrangement is such that we are not able to remove the backing strip so that is the reason it has to be left in place and the joint efficiency which we get is either i can get joint efficiency one for this if even if i have full radiography himanshu has mentioned it's 0.9 even if we have full radiography okay that is the difference in type number 1 and type number 2 joints now category d type of joint shall also have full penetration wells how that can be achieved there are figures mentioned in the code to show us that how we can have a full penetration wells okay so we uh, i hope you remember that type c and d okay these are the c is with a uh, flange uh, welded with pipe d is pipe or nozzle d is with shell to nozzle okay so if this is the weld this is how we'll have to ensure either i have to keep backing strip here because second side if we are not welding and it has to be backing strip and through this i can achieve full penetration okay 
then I'll have welding from this side, other side also access and then fillet weld. So this is what we have to follow if there is lethal service. Still, we are talking about requirement for lethal service. It's not for all, only for lethal service. Okay. Now, the last requirement is like if we have a heat exchanger. Okay. And in heat exchanger, lethal service requirement is applicable only to one side. Okay. You guys know that there are two side, tube side and shell side. So what if lethal service is applicable to only one of the sides? Then the requirements which we discussed that will be applicable only to that side. We don't have to apply it to complete vessel. Only to that side, this service requirement will be applicable. Okay. I hope you understood this part. Stay tuned for more videos related to welding requirements.